Hey YouTube, it's Ryan Grover with the Help Cloud channel. Today I want to look at the Samsung Harman Kardon sound bar. It's the Q90R. Now this is the flagship offering from Samsung this year and arguably one of the best sound bars in 2020. Now I've reviewed a bunch of sound bars in the past, the Bose 700 sound bar, the Sonos speaker systems, and I wanna know how this one stacks up compared to those. But today, let's do a deep dive into this product. I'll unbox it for you, we'll do a product setup, review all of the new features, what separates this one from its predecessor, the N950, and then I really wanna answer the question, is it worth it to spend this amount of cash for this sound bar. Now the sound bar itself comes out of the box first, right on top is the usual candy bar shape. It's long and slender. Next, the accessory box. Next is that subwoofer in that styrofoam casing as well. And then last, the satellite speakers come out. They're wrapped in styrofoam, really well protected. Now inside the accessory box, you're gonna find the manual. You'll find an HDMI cable. You'll find the power cable for the, uh, for the sound bar itself the power cable for the subwoofer, and then two power cords for those rear satellite component speakers. Some batteries, you'll find the remote. Additionally, you'll find some sticky feet and two wall mounting brackets for those of you who have wall mounted TVs and want to wall mount your sound bar. The sound bar itself is 19 and a half pounds. It is a little over 48 inches wide. It's about three and a quarter inches tall and about five and a half inches deep. It's obviously built for about a 65 inch TV. For reference sake, I have a 77 inch LG over my shoulder, so you can use that to compare it to your own setup. Where it is three inches tall, it does clip a small amount of my television screen but it's not enough to bother me from any of my normal viewing angles. Samsung and Harman Kardon have already made a baby and the world loved it. It was the HWN950, the predecessor to this. So if you're looking at the Q90R, thinking that it looks very similar to the N950, you're absolutely right. They only made a few slight modifications to this soundbar, adding adaptive sound and gamer mode. So largely the soundbar itself has stayed the same and the component speakers have stayed the same, but most of their focus has gone into the subwoofer, tweaking its design and hopefully improving the sound quality that comes out of this. Now, it also seems that Harman Kardon has adopted Henry Ford's mantra, you can have this in any color that you want as long as it's black. Their website says it's a natural gray, but to my eye, it is just a nice matte black finish. The front, top, and sides have a nice mesh metal surround. Around back and on the bottom, it's a hardened plastic feel to it. On top, it has a power button, a function button, volume up and down buttons. So really simple controls. On the right, there is a little window. It does scroll through and let you know as you function through those different sound modes, which sound mode you're on, and then also displays what level of audio input you have whether it's Dolby, DTSX, HDR, whatever that sound is coming through. On the bottom, you have a power plug where you can insert that power cord, plug it into the wall, and then it has two HDMI ports, one HDMI arc input, one digital optical audio input, and a USB input. You can download their firmware and plug it in and update your firmware. There are also two buttons, one to allow you to manually sync your subwoofer and your component speakers, and the second button is a network button to manually sync your Wi-Fi network. So it's really simple on the bottom. It would be nice if it had a few more HDMI inputs for those of you that like to have multiple AV units plugged in, but two seems to get a Blu-ray and some other streaming device. Now where this is a true 7.1.4 speaker system with 17 speakers total, nine of those speakers are forward facing. That gives you one tweeter and two mid-range speakers per channel. So you have three on the right, three in the center, and three on that left. You have two sideways firing speakers that help broaden that sound stage beyond the edge of your TV screen. And then you have two upward firing drivers on the edge of that sound bar as well to help create that overhead immersive 3D imaging that you get with Dolby Atmos and with DTSX. 
With 4K HDR built in, it does support HDR10, HDR10+, and you can also pass through uh, Dolby Vision as well. They released a firmware update for this unit in the fall of 2019 that supports EARC, or Enhanced ARC. It allows lossless audio and corrects for any latency issues between your TV and the soundbar. The subwoofer measures eight inches wide, just about 16 inches deep and 16 inches tall. So it's a nice compact box. It's a little slimmer this time around. It features an eight inch sideways firing driver that's rated up to 160 watts and is ported in the back. Now as you come around back, similar to the satellite speakers, it has a power plug and basically two LEDs, a standby for power and that network connectivity indicator. So if it isn't connected to the network, there is a manual sync button. Installing it is as simple as inserting that power cable into the back and then plugging the power in the wall and then waiting for the system to capture it. It's that simple. Now Harman Kardon spent a tremendous amount of time re-engineering this speaker, so it should perform much better than its predecessor, the N950. Most sound bars have really bloated bottom end bass, so you get really great kind of thunder and shaking the room but that mid frequency is oftentimes lacking. Now I'm hopeful that Harman Kardon with their engineering team has addressed that with this speaker and that we'll get really good low end frequency but really good smooth transitions into those mid frequencies as well. The rear speakers are also about four and three quarter inches wide, about eight and a quarter inches tall, and again about five and a half inches deep. They have two forward facing drivers, one per side, and then they have two upward firing speakers to create or complete that overhead sound imaging that you get with the Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. As you come around back, there is a threaded nut so you can wall mount it or you can set it on a speaker pedestal or on the back of your couch, whatever works for you. There are two LED indicators. One is a standby, letting you know if you have power to the speaker, and the second is network connectivity. There is a button that you can press to manually sync that system up. On the bottom, tucked under the speaker, is a nice little plug for the power with a channel to thread that cable through. Each speaker is marked left and right, so you're gonna wanna be careful to place it in the right position in your room. Because those component speakers are Bluetooth, I am concerned that there might be some loss of connectivity during extended movies. There have been some online reviewers that have noted that. So we're gonna listen to this and see what I think, but I'm hopeful that they've engineered this well enough that that Bluetooth won't drop out. They haven't changed much on the remote. It's still pretty simple carousel remote. You have a few more features than what you do on top of the soundbar. You still have your volume up and down. You have a gain for your woofer so you can go up or down. And then uh, a few other mute and HDMI CEC functions. But it's really intuitive to use. Very, very simple. Now how do you set it up? Essentially each component is as simple as plugging in your power, connecting it to an outlet, and then syncing them up wirelessly. It's that easy. If they don't uh, sync on their own, you hit that manual sync button and voila. Before you start using this unit, you're going to want to make sure you're using the latest firmware update. Now there's two ways you can do that. You can go to their website, insert a USB flash drive in your computer, download the firmware update onto your computer, onto the flash drive and plug the flash drive into the USB port on the bottom of your soundbar. Essentially, you'll walk through that menu to update it. As soon as it's updated, basically, you're good to go. The second way, which I think is even easier, is just over your Wi-Fi network. Just download the SmartThings app, click on that menu button, click on the information firmware update now icon, and then follow that process and essentially you'll update the soundbar and it will scroll through and show that it's updated. Now once it's updated, the light will dim out. It'll show the last source for the moment that you've used it and then it'll dim out and you're all set. Be careful when you're adjusting the volume for these rear component speakers and especially for this subwoofer. You don't wanna crank that gain up too high because this speaker will bottom out fairly easily and you don't wanna fry your brand new subwoofer. Where it does have Bluetooth, 
You can stream some of your favorite music. You can also do it through your TV where it's connected through that HDMI arc. You'll be able to listen to whatever music you can stream into your TV. There are four sound modes, standard, surround, adaptive, and game. Gaming mode allows for a much better sound quality while gaming. Now, unfortunately, I'm not a gamer, so I can't really demo this feature and I'll comment on whether I like it or not. One of the drawbacks to this soundbar is they don't allow you to calibrate it in your room. They do have what they call as adaptive sound. It's artificial intelligence that listens to whatever it is you're doing with the soundbar. If you're watching 4K content, it listens to what's happening and tries to adjust those sound levels to produce the best sound quality for what it perceives is happening inside your room. With any sound bar, you're gonna have latency issues between the TV and the sound bar itself. And so that's why it's so important to update that firmware. And then also to make sure that you're using that HDMI arc for that return channel from your TV. If you plug your AV components directly into the sound bar, there will be no latency issues. It's only when that sound comes back or is streamed from your TV into the sound bar that there have been complaints with that latency. So why don't we actually take it for a test drive? I'll play some different sound clips to give you a feel for what it sounds like in my room. Obviously, it's not gonna translate perfectly through a YouTube channel, so let's listen to some fun stuff. Dolby Atmos, audio can precisely move in any direction within this theater. Whether the sound speaks from the back, to all the way in front, marks overhead, or moves anywhere in between. Today, you can feel every dimension. How does that sound? So before I wrap up what my thoughts are on this, let's review some of those pros and cons about this soundbar. Now the pros are the sound reproduction is natural and clear. The sound stage is great. With those two sideways firing drivers, you really can hear objects move from left to right across that screen. You also get really good sound separation of objects flying overhead coming from back to front or front to back. So that Atmos sound is, is really great. Um, now obviously, every room is gonna be a little bit different from my room. My room is attached to the kitchen and my dining room, and it has a big vaulted ceiling. So it's still able to reproduce really good overhead effects, even in my limited room. You get great performance at higher levels. The sound never feels compressed. It never feels artificial. It fully support Dolby Atmos and DTSX, so it is really fun when you can feel that move through your room. So if you're a movie watcher, a heavy TV watcher, streamer, you're really gonna enjoy this. For connectivity you have, so those two HDMI inputs, that HDMI arc, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and that optical digital audio. So the Q90R is much more future-proof than some of its competitors. In two or three years, as technology advances, this is not gonna leave you wishing that you had more. You're gonna really be able to use this for many years to come. This soundbar is compatible with Amazon Alexa out of the box. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an Echo, so I can't demonstrate how it works. But there have been very few reviewers who've had problems with it. Uh, those of you who have experience with this, comment below and let me know what you find out. Now, this does have adaptive sound and gamer mode, which separate it from its predecessor, the N950, but for me, those weren't really exceptional features. So what are the cons? It is 48 inches wide, so if you have a little bit of a smaller TV, it might overwhelm your TV. There is a weird Wi-Fi Bluetooth glitch. When you're connected to your soundbar and you're using your iPhone volume up and down buttons on the side, it doesn't know what to do, so I'll get up to 13 and then it'll drop back down to 6. Or I'll click up, almost get up to 20, and then it'll bounce down to 13 or 6. So it goes in these weird increments. Additionally, it's priced at $1,500, which is expensive. That might price it out of some of your price range or force you to save your pennies for several months before you can actually buy it. 
But when you compare it on the flip side to what a traditional theater sound system would cost that would be Dolby Atmos compatible and DTS compatible, this is a bargain. So it's two sides of the same coin here. Obviously for a sound bar and compact unit that supports Dolby Atmos, it is really, really nice. Now the moment of truth. Is this sound bar worth it? Yes, if you're looking for Dolby Atmos or DTSX support, this sound bar is a no brainer. Even if you're just looking for good mixed use, whether you stream music, you watch heavy dialogue TV, or you stream 4K Ultra HD uh, movies, this just wins. This might actually be my favorite sound bar for 2020. If you wanna save a little bit of money and still have a fantastic sound bar that doesn't offer gamer mode and adaptive sound, go get the N950. Just get its predecessor, hunt around on the internet and find a good deal for it. But for me, I love the sound bar. Now that's all for today's review. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, click the like button. Go ahead and subscribe and click that bell. You'll get notifications when we put out new content. And as always, please leave a comment below. So thanks again for stopping by and have a great day.